So it's a big welcome to our MCC family, wherever you might be. Uh, I'm Craig, and on behalf of the leadership of MCC, it's great that you can join with us this morning, where, wherever you are, and including all those guys in front of us uh, today as we record. A few things that I want to update you on in the life of our church today. So. Uh, be with me as I do that. Um, now, I'm sure some of you felt this week there was a bit of hope with the COVID situation. It looks like that there could be an end in sight. Um, the leadership team had a good weekend away or a good Saturday away last week and talking about some of these things, especially how it might relate towards the end of the year and some of the activities. So uh, whilst we can't really talk about it just at the moment, as in there's, there's nothing to say at the moment, um, hopefully sometime soon we'll be able to talk about how we can return to worshipping together. But for the time being, we'll do it on Online. We'll do it with this small group here as we record and we'll do it in small groups during the week. So I uh, hope you're uh, being able to participate in that when you can. Um, in two weeks time it's going to be Father's Day though. So uh, Sunday week we're going to come up here and we're going to have a bit of time together over breakfast between 7 and 9 o'clock on the Sunday morning. We're going to grab a sausage sandwich, we're going to just have a chat and so that's for everyone to come up. Now of course we need to do it in a COVID safe fashion so if you're crook on the day don't come up but uh, let us know and we'll drop a gift over to your place so that um, you know we can do that. But uh, yeah that'll be our Father's Day get together in two weeks time. Also, FCC nominations, they're due next week. So if you're going to join one of those FCC committees, if you could let me know and get that form across to me, they're in the bulletin as well. So you can just follow that link. Uh, and Camp Fletcher as well. There was a working bee on Saturday, so I trust that all went well. Um, and if you want to help out Camp Fletcher, uh, there's details in the bulletin on how you could support them financially as well. And don't forget our Save a Seat campaign. I think we're almost halfway. Well, not quite yet, but uh, we've certainly raised about $13,000 for that so uh, our thanks to those who have contributed to that uh, and we'll keep that going throughout September as well so that we can try and get as many seats as we can for when we return to worship. Now my apologies for the streaming last week, we had a few issues with technology, hopefully we've overcome them this week, uh, but if you haven't been able to see Jeremy's message from last week, there's a link in the bulletin or you can get it via our Facebook page as well, so I, I'd encourage you to have a look at the second reference to, one, to the Holy Spirit in 1 Peter from last week if you haven't already. Now we're getting the third reference today to the Holy Spirit and I've personally been challenged by that um, over the last couple of weeks and I couldn't work out why. And during the week I was reading a, a, a devotion that I get on version. I don't know whether you're familiar with that. Um, it was titled up, Who is the Holy Spirit and What are Your Spiritual Gifts? So I think it's helped explain things for me. And I just want to read this for you and see whether it resonates with you as well. I spent years in churches with no real introduction to the Holy Spirit. I don't even remember hearing a sermon on the subject. We knew to trust in Jesus, Jesus and worship his Father, but I had no idea how to relate to the Spirit, or even if I should. I, suspect, I suspect that many of us have that similar story. So let's begin with a couple of introductions. The Holy Spirit is not an impersonal news aid. He's not an it. He is more than a presence. He's not a ghost, holy or otherwise. Well, the King James Version excluded out of that, but, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's not an impersonal ghost. But the question is, is he God? The Holy Spirit is God for five reasons. And again, this, this went on to cite a number of references in the Bible that point us to that, but I just want to summarise those five things. The Holy Spirit possesses the four distinct divine attributes of eternity. He is everywhere, he knows everything, and he has unlimited power. Number two, the Holy Spirit performs each of these three distinctively divine works of creation, impartation of life, and the author authorship of prophecy as well. Number three, Old Testament statements about God are applied to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. I think that's pretty important too. Uh, and four, the name of the Holy Spirit is often coupled with that of God. And we can see that in 1 Corinthians and Matthew and all sorts of other references as well. And number five, the Holy Spirit is called God. So I think there are five things that tell me that the Holy Spirit is not just this imaginary thing that we don't understand. Um, and Peter asked Ananias in Acts, Acts, verse, Acts chapter 5, How is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? So I think, again, I'm convinced with that. And I think it was just something that touched me this week. I just wanted to share it with you all this week. So let's go on with our service and, uh, and let me just pray if we can do that. 
Father God, we do just thank you that we can join together this morning, wherever we might be. Uh, we know your presence. We know your presence through the Holy Spirit, and we just thank you for that. Be with us as we celebrate you this morning. Be with Jeremy as he brings us your message today. And uh, Lord, we ask that you bless us wherever we might be. In your son's name, amen. Amen.
Good morning. It's great to have your company again. Those of us that are here, it's Friday, but for those of you that uh, are watching now on Sunday, uh, welcome. A uh, couple of shout outs. I just want to say happy birthday to Owen, who turned 18 on Thursday. So that's uh, a milestone there. Uh, I'm sure you had a, a great day celebrating. I also wanted to shout out to Emily Turner up there in Bathurst and uh, up there doing your prank, Emily. Um, we missed you on Tuesday night. But uh, I've heard you're doing well up there, but just a shout out to you as well. Wonderful. Well, we're continuing our series looking at the person and work of the Holy Spirit in the book of 1 Peter. We started a couple of weeks ago, and I mentioned to you at the start of this series that there are three indisputable references in the book of 1 Peter to the person and work of the Holy Spirit. I also mentioned that I believe that there are a further eight and uh, I will reference them next week. I would say that they are highly probable references to the person and work of the Holy Spirit. But we will look at those eight uh, next week. But today we're up to the third, the third indisputable reference to the person and work of the Holy Spirit. The first reference we found in 1 Peter 1 and verse 2. And then last week we looked at the second reference, the indisputable reference there to the person and work of the Holy Spirit in chapter 1 and verse 12. And this week we find the third reference to the person and work of the Holy Spirit in chapter 4. Chapter 4 and verse 14. So if you're following with me there, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14 is this indisputable reference to the person and work of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read from verse 12 through to verse 19 to give verse 14 some context. So if you follow with me, 1 Peter chapter 4 and reading verse 12. It says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though some strange thing was happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. And here's verse 14. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Here's the reference. For the spirit of glory, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God rests on you. We'll continue to read verse 15. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. <laughs> I like that word, meddler. <laughs> I don't practice meddling. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting that, that Peter uses this word meddler. This thought of one who engages in things that are alien to their calling. So if you engage in meddling and you receive insult from that, then possibly, and we could discuss that, but possibly uh, there's no blessing there. Reading on. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Then Peter finishes verse 19. He says, so then, with all that in mind, so then... Those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. So let's have a look at verse 14. Here is the reference to the person and work of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to notice with me that Peter echoes or links verse 14 to two other passages of Scripture. And we're going to read them together. And the first is in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. So we have verse 14. And Peter is borrowing or he's linking or echoing the words of Isaiah. And we'll pick it up in, uh, we'll read verse 1 and verse 2. And this is what it says. It says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. 
From his roots a branch will bear fruit. Verse 2, the spirit of glory or the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel, the spirit of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Notice this link here. In, in 1 Peter, you know, 4.14, 4, we read of the, the spirit of glory, the spirit of the Lord. And Peter's referencing here Isaiah, the spirit of glory. This is the Holy Spirit, the spirit of glory, the spirit of the Lord. Uh, the children of Israel, of course, it's a direct prof prophetic word here of Jesus, who the spirit would rest upon as well. But this thought here of the children of Israel who would have the spirit of glory overshadowing them. Or if you like, and some of you would be familiar with this term, the Shekinah glory of God. That was evidence of the presence of God. And so Peter's referencing here the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory, the evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the second reference here that Peter goes to is in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11. Matthew 5, 11. Of course, Peter would go here. Why would Peter reference uh, this particular passage? Uh, because he was there. <laughs> he was there listening to this great sermon by Jesus. We call it the Sermon on the Mount or, or the Beatitudes. And again, Peter is referencing this in support of uh, his thought here in verse 14. Let me read it to you. I won't read the whole sermon, but you know that. Blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, etc. And we get to verse 11. Listen to this. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you, listen to this, because of me. Not your meddling, but because of me. Rejoice and be glad. That's easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So we've got these two references that Peter uses in support of this Verse 14 here. Let me read verse 14 to you again. 1 Peter 4 verse 14. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit rests upon you. I want you to notice with me here that, that Peter picks up and uses the same word that Jesus uses. The Greek word that's translated insult. Both Jesus used it on the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are you when people insult you. Peter's using it here. He says, if you are insulted because of the name, you are blessed. That word insult, it carries with it the thought of attack. It carries with it the thought of assault, abuse, vilification, reviled, persecuted, excluded. These thoughts here... Uh, if we face this, then Peter is saying, if we face this insult, we are blessed. We are blessed. What is Peter saying here? Notice here, he's saying, if you're attacked, if you're insulted, if you're abused, if you're assaulted because of my name, this is what he says, if you're assaulted for being called by his name. Well, we are, aren't we? We are called by his name. He says, if you are assaulted or abused or insulted for bearing his name, we do, don't we? We bear his name. We are Christians, Christians. We bear his name. If you are assaulted or insulted, uh, abused for believing in him, come on, we do, don't we? We believe in him. We put our faith in him. And for that, we may be insulted. We may be rejected, persecuted. Peter is saying here, if you are attacked, insulted, for confessing, 
and professing Him. And we do that, don't we? We do that in our worship. We confess Him and we profess, we sing of His name. I'm old enough to know the days where we used to sing Scripture and song. And we're singing the Word of God and we're professing and we're confessing and we're declaring Him in song as well as uh, around the ministry of the Word. And Peter is saying here, if you're facing this insult for bearing His name, being called by His name, for believing in Him, for professing Him, he says, you are blessed. You've got a funny idea of blessing, I think, Peter. You are blessed. Jesus said it too. You are blessed. Blessed. Blessed is he. So what is Peter's understanding of blessing? The blessing is that the Spirit of glory, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is resting on you in the midst of the insult. That is the blessing. Peter sees the Holy Spirit resting on you, in you, over you. He sees this as divine favour. He sees it as protection. Peter sees it here as evidence that the Holy Spirit has not abandoned you. In fact, the Holy Spirit has been given for our defence. In the midst of insult, when we're excluded, when we face abuse, in that moment, the Holy Spirit has not abandoned us. And we can be tempted to feel like that. Hang on a minute. Where are you, God? Peter also sees the blessing as a privilege. In that God uses the insult and the suffering to strengthen and refine our faith. We know it so well, don't we? That we grow most in the valley, not on the mountain top. Story time. I was trying to think of a time when I had faced insult for professing the name of Christ. For believing in him, for wearing or bearing his name. And a story came to mind, and I know I tell stories that happened 20 or 30 years ago. <laughs> there is stuff happening, <laughs> there is good stuff happening yesterday. But I remember this occasion. I was I was working for Coles, that, that was my background, retail management, came out of school and went into that, had the dream of managing a Coles supermarket. Uh, ended up uh, achieving that, but found it wasn't really what I was looking for when I got there. Uh, how many of you found that? You pursue something relentlessly to then get it, and you think, hang on a minute, it's not really what I wanted. And that was the case with management. But I learned some good skills. But I remember at the time I was uh, assistant manager in a store in Brisbane in Strathpine, just on the northern suburbs there. And I remember one day the district supervisor came into our, into our store and uh, you're always on edge when those supervisors come in. They've got a lot of authority. Uh, they can make decisions that really uh, were never questioned, to be honest. And, uh, and so he came in, I was called to the office and, and we'll say it was Bill, uh, the store manager was there. So I sat down with Bill and, and the district supervisor were there. And he simply said, um, and there were two weeks to go before the end of the financial year. And he said to us, the figures are not good. You've got two weeks uh, before the end of the financial year to, 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 to uh, make that bottom line. Well, it was, naturally speaking, impossible. <laughs> there was no way that we could, in two weeks, generate the sales and the profit to make that bottom line, to make budget. And so he said, you know, you've got two weeks and, and I'll be back. Well, we both knew what that meant. <laughs> and so once the district supervisor had left, uh, Bill and I were, were there on our own and I said to Bill and sometimes I open my mouth and then I think about it later <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but then sometimes out of the abundance of the heart the mouth does speak and uh, we just hope it's good don't we <laughs> and uh, it'll be good if we fill our heart with good things and so my response to Bill was well Bill you know that I'm a Christian you know I, I attend church I believe in God and I said I'm willing to come in for the next two weeks 
every morning. Uh, I've got my own key, you know, I'll come in and I'm literally going to walk, literally, physically, I'm going to walk up and down every aisle and I'm going to pray over those cornflakes. I'm going to pray over that dog food. I'm going to pray, God, we want sales. We're going to sell out of that and sell out of this. And, and then I put my hand on some of those products that are not on sale but have got a high markup. Some of you may know what I'm talking about there. We want those to sell, you know. And so I did that. And so I said to Bill, I'm going to do that. Well, he looked at me and he said, that's ridiculous. I said, well, Bill, you have said to me in past times that, that you believe in God. He said, Jeremy, I'm not praying. That's ridiculous. And, 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 and words to that effect. That in some respect, when I look back on it, I think that was insult. You know, your prayer, it, it's not going to change anything. But he said, if you want to do it, you go do it. But I won't be joining you. And he did then say, he said, you make sure that you do it on your time, not my time. Mm -hmm. I said, that's fine. I'll come in, I'll do half an hour of prayer, and then I'll clock on. I pretty much get much gave in my life anyway. <laughs> I've never been one to clock on, clock off. So I did that for two weeks. Well, at the end of that two weeks, the district supervisor came in, and this is what happened. We knew we hadn't made the bottom line. We, we, we didn't make budget. He came in, sat us down, and he said, Bill, you're fired. You can pick up your goods now, you can go. Simple as that. Out. He turned to me, he said, Jeremy, you're promoted. You'll be the temporary store manager until we work out what we're going to do. And what happened is, in two weeks, I got promoted to uh, Kenmore Store, which at the time was in the top five stores in Australia, and had the opportunity to co-manage with a guy who was regarded as the highest ranked store manager in Australia. It was like, wow. Bill, you're gone. Jeremy, you're promoted. Bill turned to me and he said, I've got one thing to say to you. He said, if I was you, I'd keep praying. <laughs> I said, exactly, Bill. And I do remember, I said, can I pray for you now? I felt for the guy. He's got a family, he's got a mortgage, and you're walking out of that store with nothing. He said, don't worry about it, Jeremy. <laughs> What's my point? In the midst of insult, the Holy Spirit is there. In the midst when you are faced with opposition and criticism, when you are, we can use that word persecuted, I don't know if we really understand that word, word here in, 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 in a developed country uh, like Australia. But the principle is the same. When we face that opposition, the Holy Spirit is not abandoned. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of glory, the Spirit of God, is there and he is our defense let's continue to read and we'll pick up from verse 15 let me read verse 14 again our text if you are insulted because of the name of christ you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of god the holy spirit rests on you of course we understand that it's resting on us we have the holy spirit within yeah verse 15 if you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. Verse 16. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. I want to pause there with this word ashamed for a moment. Peter uses this word ashamed. It's also the same Greek word translated ashamed that the Apostle Paul uses in the book of Romans. And so I just want to go there for a moment. Peter is saying, in the insult or the suffering, do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed. Ashamed. Now, we connect, I think most people connect, that thought, that, that English word ashamed, we connect it to embarrassment. Most times. Or we connect it to feelings of guilt. I'm ashamed. Guilt. Um, maybe uh, that was the case for Adam and Eve. They're ashamed. There's a sense of guilt. They've eaten of the fruit. Or we connect it to shame or we connect it to distress. But the original Greek word does not make this connection. The better interpretation of this Greek word that we translate ashamed that Peter uses here and Paul uses is better the better word to use is the word disappointment or disappoint let me read it to you 
uh, Romans 1.16, which is probably the most well-known passage that uses this word ashamed. Paul says, doesn't he, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Let me take that word ashamed out and use the word disappoint, which is the closest English word to the original Greek word. Paul is saying, I am not disappointed. There is no disappointment in the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Paul is saying, I don't carry disappointment. I know the gospel is powerful, and I know the gospel saves, it heals, it delivers, it sets free. I don't have any disappointment attached to it. And so Peter uses the same word. He's saying here, if you are insulted, if you are suffering, do not be disappointed. In the insult, do not be disappointed. I can hear Heath when he looked at 1 Peter talking about this. Do not be disappointed. There are two thoughts here. Number one, don't be disappointed. I told you, you would face persecution. You will face insult. People will reject you. People will mock you and laugh at you and jeer at you for bearing the name of Jesus Christ, for professing his name, for uh, accepting his name and believing in him. So number one, don't be disappointed. You knew it was going to happen. But secondly, the insult is actually the evidence of the Spirit's presence. You see, sometimes when we face opposition, we get disappointed. Where is God? Where are you? This shouldn't be happening to me. No, point number one, I told you it was going to happen. Jesus said that. You will face trials, right? But don't be disappointed. Don't feel that you've been abandoned. Because in here is the promise uh, of the Spirit's presence. We should never be disappointed. We should never feel Disappointed that God hasn't heard me. He has. Disappointed that God's not acting. He is. Disappointed, God, you wouldn't know. Yes, he knows. Craig before gave us that example there in the testimony. The all-knowing God, the all-knowing spirit. There is no disappointment in the gospel and there is no disappointment in the insult and suffering. God is with us. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. Let's read on. But praise God that you bear your name. You know, we replace disappointment with praise. That's what Peter's saying. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And it is hard for the righteous to be saved. What will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, I want to get to this. So then, those who suffer according to God's will. Notice that, according to God's will. Yeah? Not out of our own stupidity, not out of our own foolishness, we're being insulted. But if the insult, the suffering, the persecution, the rejection, being outcast is the result of God's will, what does Peter say? Should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. I want to just spend a minute on this. So then, those who suffer according to God's will, what should we do? We need to do something. In the midst of attack, opposition, assault. You know, in the midst of the crises we're in now, what do we do? What should we do? When people revile us, when people speak ill of us, when people reject us, what should we do? We need to do something. And Peter suggests here what we should do. Number one, commit to the faithful God. One of the first things, when people face tough times, when people face opposition, the temptation is to walk away. The temptation is to draw back. The temptation is to pull back. Well, I, 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 you know, Peter says, don't draw back. Don't, 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 don't slide away. In fact, people don't fall away, they slide slowly away. 
But he says, don't do that. He says, this is what you've got to do. Commit yourself to your faithful creator. I can still hear my mum and dad saying to me when I used to say, oh, you know, God's, God's moved away. No, no, my mum and dad would say, you've moved away. <laughs> now, there's a whole lot of theology around that as well. Commit yourself. But then I like this. He says, and continue to do good. Continue to do good. In the face of opposition, in the face of insult, persecution, don't stop doing good. You know, it's been my experience, an observation in church life, in leadership and ministry, and, and, and being a believer in the pew, right? That often the opposition comes from within, if we're honest. You know, somebody said to me the other day, hey, Jeremy, slow down. Pull back. Somebody just a couple of weeks ago said to me, you're doing too much. I thought, man, I'm only in first gear. <laughs> you know? No, no, pull back. You know, just you know, ease off, ease off. Really? I wonder why you're saying that. Maybe my commitment to my faithful creator, maybe my passion to continue to do good work is making you feel uncomfortable. Maybe it's making you feel uneasy. Maybe you feel it's making you look bad. So rather than cheer me, you'll jeer me. And maybe bring me back down or, you know, to, to where you're at. No, 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 no. Here's the thought. What are we going to do? What are we doing in COVID? What do we do in our storms? What do we do in our trials? We stay committed to our faithful creator and we don't stop doing good. We don't. Here's a thought. I don't want to waste COVID. I don't want to waste my uh, insults. I don't want to waste the persecution. I don't want to waste the opposition. The Holy Spirit is with me, empowering me and enabling me and cheering me on. So I'm not going to draw back and pull back and just relax. No, I'm going to keep moving forward and keep doing good works. There's a lot of good work that we are doing as a church right now in the midst of COVID. You know, we hear about death in COVID and my heart goes out. My heart goes out to the people in nursing homes that are having birthdays and celebrations and can't have family visit. My heart goes out for that. And there, there, there is a lot of sad story and a lot of sadness and a lot of grief. But, you know, also in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this time, there are businesses that are flourishing. There are businesses that are starting up. My wife and I started another business in COVID because we're not going to draw back. We're going to keep doing good works and stay committed to our faithful creator. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you today. Don't miss using that abuse, using that insult, turning it around. I, I, I love that story. What, wasn't it, Joseph? You meant it for evil. God meant it for good. You meant it for evil. You know, his brothers attacked him, abused him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, you know what? <laughs> I'll fill your sacks. Don't you worry. There's plenty in the barns because I haven't been pulling back. I've been doing good work. I just want to encourage us as a community. Don't miss the opportunity that we're in now to continue to stay faithful to God and continue to do good. There's a lot of good happening in that unknown space as well. I close with this story. A friend of mine in Queensland, uh, he, uh, they just opened their church again and they're back having Sunday services. And ironically, six families rang him and said, we're not coming back. We just, just, they, they, they said, Tony, keep doing the online and we're going to keep watching it from our bed in our pyjamas. <laughs> and we're loving it. And, you know, church pastors and leaders, we're, we're, that's a real thing. 
people are, are, are thinking, wow, this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, in bed watching church, you know. They're still giving online and, and, you know, there's some phone calls and a catch up, but I'm enjoying church on Sunday morning from my bed. So six families said, we're, we're probably not going to be coming back. But on the day they opened, and here's my, here's my thought, because they continued to do good, continued to do good, put their hand to good works, put their hand, don't draw back, keep going. On the day they opened, six new families came to church. And they said, we've been watching you online and we have been loving it. We're not churchgoers, but, but there's something that's drawing us here. Can we, can we come to your church, they said. Some of them are Christians, some of them are not. They got saved, baptised in water, and away we go. COVID's a blessing. You'll see it as a blessing or a curse. And your conversation will follow that thought. Or we say, you know what, we're going to make use of this time. And we're going to stay faithful to God, stay committed to the disciplines of the Christian faith, and we're going to keep doing good. Keep doing good. In Jesus' name. Yeah? Everybody said? Amen. Amen. So, the third indisputable reference to the Holy Spirit. If you're insulted in any way, big or small, it's all relative actually. No one's putting a gun to our head. But that little comment that your neighbour makes, that just feels like it's crippling you. Feels like, oh. That's just as real, isn't it? Peter says, if you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you're blessed. We're blessed. We are a blessed people. For the spirit of glory The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is upon us, is with us, in us, and working through us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement of your word. And I pray, Lord, for us as a community. Lord, there may be people in our church, in our community, that are facing insult, that are feeling excluded that are feeling on the outer. Maybe they are hurting. Maybe there has been things said, things done. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will draw near to those people. You are the great comforter. Bring comfort and bring peace. Bring renewal. And also pray for us as a community, that as a church, we're so visible. If so many people know we're here, walk through our car park every day, I pray, Lord, that they will see, they will hear, and one day taste of our commitment to you, Lord, and our passion and our drive and our enthusiasm for you and the gospel. And I pray even as you said, Jesus, that people will see our good works and glorify you. They'll be drawn to our church to our community. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing compares. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord.
service this morning. I uh, really appreciate uh, you being a part uh, of our service. Um, don't forget our small groups are on and meeting at various times during the week. And for those of you that are interested, um, in about a couple of hours time we're meeting in Cronulla for a bit of a bring your own picnic. So uh, if you want to come, uh, my number's there, I can let you know. We haven't actually decided the actual location, but we are going to just bring your own picnic. Um, so it's around about 11 o'clock now, I think. Um, so maybe around about 1 o'clock uh, we're going to head down there and just have a bit of time together. We'll observe all the COVID restrictions and regulations and hand sanitizer, and we'll have our uh, uh, appointed uh, safety officer, I'm sure. Um, but bring some lunch and, and we can catch up a bit. Um, text me or call me. Um, I might do a Facebook uh, post uh, to give you the address. But anyway, until we meet again next week, let me just pray. Father, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have sent us your Holy Spirit. Help us to continue to develop a hunger and a desire to know the Holy Spirit, to know the person of the Holy Spirit, and to engage, to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And we too want to continue to doing the good works that the Holy Spirit has prepared for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone on the other end of the television screen said, Amen. 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 Amen.